Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about dates in Java, and I'll talk about calendars, uh, time zones, and timestamps. So every programming language has some concept of date. Uh, they all have a way to create dates, manipulate dates, and format them out. And there's usually some way to deal with time zones as well. So I'm going to show you how to do this in Java. Uh, the basic class in Java is date. And that's java.util.date. Um, you'll see that uh, it has a lot of documentation on it, um, but essentially uh, it's a, just a date object that you're going to use to ma manipulate um, basic dates and time. So java util date, date, or we'll say, how about now? Uh, now equals new date. And when you call new date, it's actually calling uh, system current time millis. So what a timestamp is, uh, let's call it, let's let's just call this uh, system.currentTimeMillis. The, the timestamp is kind of the basic foundation of date and what it is is the UTC time of um, the number of seconds measured between the current time and midnight January 1st 1970. So that's what a timestamp is. And it's kind of just an arbitrary point in time that the creators of uh, Unix used back in the day. And what it does is just helps us um, numerically define a date very easily. So we can just use one long and we can say that's the timestamp. So I'm gonna print out the timestamp just so you can see what today's timestamp looks like. And I'll print out now so you can see what um, just a blank date that formats it to the current date, what that's going to look like. So let's run that. All right, so a timestamp, it's the number of milliseconds since January 1st, 1970 at midnight till today. Um, so that's obviously a lot of milliseconds. Um, it's just useful for all kinds of math operations and easily passing around dates. Um, but Otherwise, it's probably nicer to have something in some kind of human readable format like this. It's hard to really, um, as a human, understand what this means. So um, there, there are things like date formatters to deal with this. But by default, when you call toString on a date, it just takes out what the current um, representation of that date was based on the timestamp that date represents, and it formats it with a toString method that's pretty human readable. And one other thing about the date class is that the date class itself has no concept of time zone. And we'll see this when we start messing with calendar and setting the time zone on it. But what this Eastern time zone here is, that's just the default time zone setting for this computer added to it. So date itself has no concept of time zone. When I called toString, it put the default time zone on there. Um, so calendar, let's look at calendar. Calendar is newer than date. Um, date was the first thing in Java, but they deprecated a lot of methods, and now calendar is the one that is taken over. Calendar is a lot more powerful. Um, it has time zones. It has multiple implementations of calendar. We're going to use something called a Gregorian calendar, and you can look this up and learn about the history of it. But basically, this is the calendar that the Western world uses. Um, and calendar lets you manipulate the date. So I can say calendar.set, and I can say I want to set the field on calendar of milliseconds to zero. And what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to set, since this calendar, when we created it, it created it for today. What I'm going to do is set it to midnight today. So I'll say calendar, uh, calendar dot, um, seconds zero. So what I'm doing here, I'm setting a field. This is the millisecond field. I'm setting it to zero. I'm setting the field seconds to zero. I'm going to set the field minutes to zero. Dirt dot minutes. And then finally, I'm going to set hours to zero. And we'll see what that gets us. And if you look, I've got all of these um, all of these uh, these public static final ints, and the fact is the calendar takes a setter with an int int, 
and these are just helper methods so I know what integer value corresponds to that field. Um, and this is how you're probably going to want to write it when you write your code. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is print this out and I'm, I'm going to show you that uh, the problem with calendar is it doesn't have some kind of easy two string method so you're going to have to convert it to a date first and to do that you say get time and that will convert the calendar back into a date so now let's see what this prints out right so we truncated it off the zeros and this is something I'm showing you because I've had to do this um, fairly often in programming when I'm trying to query on a, a day and I don't really care about the current time I just query I just want to like see um, from 30 days ago to today you truncate the time to midnight and then you get the exact slice in time that way so and you can see it's it's still converting it to some default time zone but um, I did get my date working here um, let's do something let's actually set the time zone on the calendar uh, we'll say set time zone and the way this works is you have time zone that's a class and there's a static method on here called get time zone and it gives you an ID we're going to use the ID of UTC and what UTC is that's that used to be called Greenwich Mean Time that's the universal time uh, coordinate I believe is the acronym and that is basically time zero so UTC is super useful on computers because if you want to coordinate computers in different time zones you just make them all time zero on the server side and then they can communicate with each other at exactly the same um, reference point okay so now that we set this time zone let's see what happens okay so what you're gonna see it subtracted um, four and now it says I'm on November 6 or November 5th um, at uh, what is that that should be 8 o'clock right um, so because uh, Eastern time zone is four hours off of um, the uh, zero time zone UTC it subtracted four when it did the conversion because I did this uh, UTC and um, when I went back to Eastern time zone it pulled four hours off of that so this correctly set the time zone here okay let's let's um let's keep going let's look at date formatter um, so what this date formatter does is it gives you a customized way to print out something like this a human readable date format and the Y's correspond to year the capital M's correspond to month the lowercase d's correspond to day hours minutes seconds the thing about this capital H those are 24 hour time hours and the Z is the time zone so let's use date formatter and let's um, let's let's use date formatter all throughout here I'm gonna say date formatter dot format uh, this now let's see what happens here I'll make a space in between these just so you can see it clearly okay uh, that did that did um, minus five so um, I think I'm getting some issues here because my um, I'm not sure if my computer is set correctly today is the day that day daylight savings time ended for me so um, November 6 is the day that we fell back um, so the time zone just shifted for me yesterday or this morning I guess um, so that might be why there are some strange inconsistencies between EDT and EST what I think this is Eastern Daylight Savings Time and this is Eastern Time um, okay so this is formatted it shows the date that's a time zone offset of minus uh, five hours and uh, let's do let's do another one let's print this one out too um, let's say uh, CISO um, calendar or let's let's do um, date formatter dot format um, cal dot get time let's see what that gives us right so this was the time zone that we had 
and now it's printing out the uh, that this is this is minus four. So Eastern Daylight Savings Time is four hours off, and Eastern Time is five hours off, right? Um, now the other thing you can do is actually set the time zone right on. Um, uh, let's let's make another date. Um, but you can set the time zone right on the date formatter itself. So I can say um, date formatter dot set time zone, and I can I can do the same thing. I can set it to UTC. Oops. Uh, time zone dot get time zone. And by the way, there are tons of time zone IDs. This is just one of them. Um, if you check the book, you can see it says there are there are more than 500 time zone IDs, and they they look something like this maybe, um, and they have locales for different countries so that they format different when you print them out, but. Basically, there's a lot to this, so I'm just sending it to UTC to show you an example. Since UTC, you commonly use on servers to coordinate times. All right, let's uh, print this out. I'm gonna do a space here. Yeah, print a new line here, and we'll see uh, date formatter dot format today. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. Okay, so now it's saying um, this is the, the current date in UTC at um, time zone zero, um, and it added five hours to it. So that makes sense since our time zone is minus five. All right, so this is just a basic overview. Using dates, dates are built from timestamps, using calendars, Calendars are kind of a more complex um, abstraction on top of date. They let you manipulate the time. They let you set time zones. And then date formatters, of course, too, you can use. And date formatters are time zone aware as well. So thanks for watching.